submerged in the Potomac River, just 30 miles south of our nation's capital, lives a vestige of World War I, a hidden piece of history that Sammy Orlando of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is eager to share. We have the remains, the resting place, of about 100 World War I era wooden steamships. These boats were commissioned near the end of World War I, and it was basically some contribution that we were making to the wartime effort. These ships never made it to their intended purpose across the ocean during the wartime period. The war ended before a lot of these could put into use for those specific transport purposes. And with the end of the war, these wooden ships became obsolete. With metal hulls and diesel engines coming back from war, nobody wanted to buy slow steam engine powered wooden vessels. Too expensive to store or maintain, the ships were eventually burned and sunk in an out of the way inlet in Charles County. Nearly a century later, the wooden hulled behemoths are integral to the ecosystem at Mallows Bay. Artifacts of war, now bastions of marine life. These vessels, they provide structure in an area of the Potomac River that is otherwise muddy. And that structure provides the basis for the trapping of sediments, it provides the basis for grasses to be sheltered, it provides the basis for wetlands to grow. And as nature continues to reclaim these vessels, this becomes one of the more pristine areas of the Potomac River in terms of its biological productivity and, and biodiversity. It's an incredible merging of habitat and history. We look at it as a giant living laboratory. I mean, it's, it's fascinating that we had this resource right here. Susan Langley is the state underwater archeologist at the Maryland Historical Trust. She has an encyclopedic knowledge of these ships. The engines vibrated so much when the wood was green, and that was another problem. They built them with green wood very quickly. The vibration would cause the vessels to leak. World War I is not an entity of which we have a lot of sites remaining, and to have them right here in Maryland, so close at hand, they're not miles out at sea, they're not hundreds of feet deep, they're accessible to the public. And in 2019, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, gave this unique destination its due. It's my absolute honor and pleasure to welcome community and dignitaries alike to this event to celebrate the designation of Mallows Bay Potomac River as our nation's 14th National Marine Sanctuary. NOAA got involved with the idea of a sanctuary through a nomination that came in to NOAA. And it was from a broad-based group of community constituent groups, community organizations, who knew they had something special right here on the Potomac River. And as a result of this successful partnership, we are preserving the remains of more than 100 World War I era steamships and vessels, along with ships dating back to the Civil War and the Revolutionary War and other artifacts that are nearly 12,000 years old. Becoming a sanctuary sort of gives you global street cred. I mean, we know we're important. We always know it was great, but now we've got that that NOAA spotlight on it. It's getting the public to be here, to be immersed, to capture that spirit and know why this place is so important. If they understand and they get that bond, get that connection, the stewardship is a natural extension of their interest and their desire to keep these resources for future generations. Uh, one and a half. Part of that stewardship yeah. is this solar powered buoy the result of a partnership between NOAA and the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. John Zimarelli and his team are tasked with making sure the water in Mallows Bay continues to remain at healthy levels. Our group looks at the nutrient input into the bay and the water chemistry. The buoy provides real-time water quality information for anyone interested, like boaters and watermen. 
Long term, it tracks fluctuating environmental conditions, things like algae concentration, water temperature, and turbidity, or cloudiness, even the ship's rate of decay. Every hour, a computer at the DNR office will call up the station, download the data, and put it right to the web. This is a, an array of water quality sensors. We have temperature conductivity, pH, turbidity, chlorophyll, and dissolved oxygen. Right before every reading, this wiper will turn on and spin around and wipe all the sensors to keep them clean. Every few weeks, the data is retrieved and new sensors take their place. This is more turbid, so we could, it's not bad though, we could get down to two meters before we got 10%. We stop when we hit 10% of the first underwater reading. So we got down to two meters, so light is getting down pretty far. Yeah, I believe it's a very important work to do, not only for a public health standpoint, for, but uh, an environmental standpoint. The health of the Mallows Bay ecosystem has made for a robust tourist population. Joe and Shelley Perry run Atlantic Kayak Company. I'd like to welcome you to Mallows Bay in beautiful Charles County, Maryland. They love to share their knowledge with a growing number of interested people who come for a great day on the water. Yeah, you see all the planking really is standing out today. What I like about doing tours here at Mallows Bay is I like to be able to get people out there that might just be here for the ships. I have people out here that might just be here for, na for nature, and some people are out just to go paddling. And I like to be able to intertwine the three into our tours. That was not here a week ago. And do doesn't, it, doesn't the front look like an alligator? It does. Okay. When we give tours at Atlantic Kayak Company, we want people to come away with a really good understanding of what a precious resource this is here as a natural marine sanctuary. From here, you can see just how long 300 feet really is, because water can be deceiving. <laughs> I think the experience of paddling through the wrecks was really interesting as well. There's sort of this weird industrial, slash organic dynamic. Some of these boats look kind of like dinosaur skeletons in the water. And it was just really, really a neat experience. There's a special spirit that comes over you when you're out here. And the more that you're out here, the more that spirit grows. 